In the last section, we put together some boilerplate into the tweets component and successfully navigated to it once the user signed in or signed up successfully. We're now going to do one last thing, show the username of the user when they, when they view the tweets component. Now you might think to yourself, eh, show the username, that doesn't seem that hard. We already got the username back when, we signed it, when the user signed up, right? Like we already know what that username is. Well, not quite. You know, we want to be able to retrieve the current user anywhere in our application without having to worry about whether or not the user just signed in. So here's what's going to happen. Parse does store the currently signed in user in its memory, but it does so in kind of a jerky kind of way. Let's think about mobile phones in general for a second. Apps that you use on your phone can go to sleep for days at a time, or even months really, without being used, and they can be also be closed in a moment's notice as well. So rather than storing the current user in memory, per se, Parse instead stores the current user on the device's storage device instead. So this has one really big ramification. Reading from the device's storage is not an instantaneous process. It requires some time for the phone to read from the, its storage and find out the current user. In other words, it's an asynchronous call. So let's look at tweets.js here. Our goal here is to get the current user's username and display it in the render method. To get the current user, parse exposes a method called current async, which returns the current user that's fetched asynchronously. We want to fetch the current user whenever this component first renders. That means that we'll probably want to enter or add some code to fetch that user inside of the component will mount method. Remember, this method is called right before this component will be mounted onto, or excuse me, displayed on the device's screen. So it's a perfect time to do some data load or some data fetching. At the top, we're going to go ahead and declare our parse variable. And then in component will mount, we can now make our call to the function current async. So we'll call parse.user current async. Don't forget to get the n in here. I don't know about you, but I always misspell this. So current async, since it's asynchronous call, of course, returns a promise. So we'll chain on a then, which will be resolved with the current user. As you might imagine, whenever the user is returned here, you know, whenever this promise resolves, we're going to want to set the state of our component. We want to update the state to include that current user. That will cause our component to automatically re-render, which means that the, whenever this call is completed, the username will automatically just, you know, poof, pop up there on the screen. So in here, we'll say this.setState user is user. And then we'll go ahead and default our current state, get initial state, it's a function, and we'll return an object where the initial user is just null. So to, to start off with, you know, the user will just be empty. So this is looking pretty good here. There's just one little case that we need to be thinking about. What happens in the case that we call, you know, we, we start to render this component, component will mount is called, we attempt to retrieve the user, but then the component renders before the user is retrieved, right? Let's assume that this operation right here like takes just an arbitrary long time. Let's say it takes like five seconds. If this takes five seconds to run, but rendering the component is, you know, basically instantaneous, we'll run into an issue where you know we try to make reference to the current user but that user isn't defined yet you know it's still null so we're going to add a guard here to catch that case we'll say if this dot state dot user you know uh, if not this dot state dot user in other words if this dot state dot user does not exist yet just return text of loading if the, if the user does exist, then we'll get the username by saying this.state.user 
get the username. And this you know, get username right here will retrieve the username off of the user. And then we can say username. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I'll go ahead and refresh. And then I'll sign in as tester. And hey, there we go. Welcome back, tester, where tester is my username. Perfect. So this is looking pretty good. As we, so let's, uh, you know, let's go over what we did here just one more time. When we're using parse specifically on React Native, fetching the current user is an asynchronous process because it has to fetch that current user off the device's memory. So rather than calling just parse.user.currentUser you know, or you know, whatever the method might be, we instead called current async. This returns a promise. And when that promise is resolved, we set the current user on our state. By default, our state is going to be null. So we can sometimes run into the case in which this call right here, you know, fetching the current user, might take a little bit of time. And if we didn't, if we just tried to immediately say call like, you know, this dot state dot user dot get username, we would end up with an error because if user is null, we would be trying to call, you know, get on null, which would of course throw an error. So to guard against that case, we specifically check to make sure that there's a user on our state. If there is, or excuse me, if there's not, we'll return just some text that says, hey, you know, we're still loading right here. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and return the entire view with that username. So if you're uh, kind of if you like to experiment a lot and you're curious, um, you know, you might try removing this entire line right here and just seeing what happens. And I'll tell you that sometimes it's going to work, but there's a couple of edge cases in the case where it will not work. So some, you know, sometimes if we remove this and this async call is very, very fast, like, you know, literally instantaneous, you know, who knows what parse does behind the scenes to get that current user. Um, sometimes it's going to work. But you know, you never know. Sometimes it might take a while to retrieve the current user. In which case, you're going to want to specifically make sure that you don't try to render the component until you've actually fetched that user. So it's kind of a you know, kind of a deal where we just you know decide to be careful and be a little bit of conservative and guard against edge cases by putting this extra check in here. Okay, so this looks great. Let's go ahead and wrap up in the next section.